was that? I know you have the zoomies. Do you not want to be held while you have the zoomies? Hey guys, I'd like you to meet Belle. She's wonderful. Okay. What up guys, Wolfgore here and welcome back to the vlog. Let me just tighten this up a little bit. Um, how are we doing guys? Uh, it's been a while. It's actually been five months since the last update vlog. I actually genuinely didn't realize how long it had been. I knew it had been a while, um, but uh, I went and checked on the channel and I was like, holy crap, five months. Okay. Yeah, we should probably do one of these just so you guys can know what's going on. Um, and I didn't rewatch the last one, so I'm not exactly sure what I was talking about back then, but uh, definitely some big life updates have happened and they actually started happening right around the time of the last update. Um, and I'm just going to go into this more personal stuff very briefly. I don't want to TMI you guys with it. Uh, but basically, like, uh, towards the end of the year last year, around November, um, my my uh, anxiety issues that I've talked about many times over the years uh, really just started to, like, get out of hand worse than they ever had before. Um, like, I'd had panic attacks before, but they just started happening, like, every day when I was driving. And uh, it was a big problem, and I was I was very stressed. And I was like, okay, we've got to do something about this because this is a big, unacceptable problem, right? You can't just be having panic attacks and every day. It, it doesn't work. Um, so for the first time, I was like, okay, time to get a professional involved. Um, so I went and saw and spoke with a professional, and they gave me... A medication and um, I also got an emotional support animal. Uh, her name is Belle Belle. She is a wonderful cat. She has the zoomies right now and she does not like to be held when she has the zoomies. She loves being held on her back uh, the vast majority of the day but when she's dashing around the house she's like don't hold me right now. I'm catching invisible zebras and stuff. <laughs> but she's wonderful. Uh, the medication has helped hugely the daily panic attacks have gone away. And uh, and uh, just as a brief aside, you know, I just want to put this out there, not to TMI you guys, but, you know, I also, I feel like I got my spirituality kind of back on track with my Christian roots. And that, like, I've been out in the weeds for a long time with my spirituality. And to be back with my roots, it just feels right. And uh, uh, I know that's not for everybody. And everybody's got their own opinion on that kind of stuff, so I don't want to TMI it too much, but I just got to say it is, it's is—it's good to be walking with God again. And uh, that's all I'll say about that. So overall, went through some really hard times, really hard, uncomfortable times, but ultimately feeling much better because I got the help that I needed. And uh, by the way, like, uh, <laughs> the, you know, as, pretty much as soon as I started, you know, getting the help, I was like, Gosh, I wish I had just done this, you know, years ago. So, you know, if you're, you know, maybe dealing with some emotional stuff and you're wondering, you know, should I talk to somebody? Should I try medication? Should I do this? And so, I'm going to suggest give it a try because it's, uh, they say it's effective for a reason because it's effective. Um, and I'm very glad that I've done this and uh, I'm just more stoked about my outlook on life moving forward than I can ever remember being, which is really, really good. That being said, this is uh, primarily, I wanna update you guys on writing stuff, book stuff, um, and and these two things kind of correlate. You know, I just wanted to share that update with you guys, but they, they do kind of correlate together, you know. I think part of why I was getting so overwhelmed is that I had sort of put this deadline on myself that I wanted to have a finished book by the end of 2023 that I could get published. And I really had a lot of high expectations for that, um, unrealistically high expectations for that. And uh, when, as the date line was closing um, and just coming to realize how not complete the book was, like that that first third that I've been working on and, and you know, sort of getting to that professional level of publisher ready with Jason is is really good. I think, but there's, there's a whole bunch of questions, interesting questions within the, the manuscript that, you know, readers are going to want answers to, 
that just aren't answered within that space because it was written as a much larger book and I was trying to cut it down to thirds and it just wasn't working. Um, and, and I had to come to terms with that. I had to come to terms with the fact that, bud, you're going to be an electrician for a while. And while it is, I believe, extremely plausible that I can retire from electric electrical at some point and go into being a full-time writer, it's not going to be tomorrow, you know? Um, and I, I, I've probably talked about these things before, um, but I really needed to internalize them, not just say them, but be like, dude, deal with it. <laughs> you know, this is going to be what it's going to be. But there was more to it than that. It was that I had to come to terms with the fact that the way that I approached writing William Witchbane and the Warlock's Curse, my first book, was not efficient. It was not professional. It was a um, it was a fuck around and find out methodology. And while I have zero regrets about just jumping in and trying things and learning because it's been a hugely educational process and I'm very proud of what I did create, I had to come to terms with the fact that trying to endlessly try to revise this book over and over again until it got to a point where it was all totally consistent and publisher ready, in my opinion, um, it was just highly inefficient. You know, I, you know, I really thought it was going to be another two years until I uh, had it completely done. And I was just like, this isn't going to work. You know, this is the early stages of me trying to learn how to be a writer. And what I need to learn right now is how to do that properly. I need to figure out the proper method um, so that I can can create books efficiently and, and actually, you know, conceive of them, outline them, write them, edit them, and publish them and get it done. And it's not, you know, this sort of endless cycle where I just get stuck in this perfectionist mindset, you know, what I'm coming to think of as sort of the Patrick Rothfuss trap. And I say Patrick Rothfuss because, you know, The Name of the Wind, I've said many times over the years, is my favorite book, or at least it was. Um, it, it's definitely one of my favorite books at this point. But, you know, Patrick Rothfuss, I, I, he is not a model author by any means. I think he's an exceptional writer when he is actually able to get something across the finish line but he is not somebody to try and model your career after. He, he is absolutely not somebody to try to model your career after. And I was trying, you know, initially to go with something like Patrick Rothfuss meets J.K. Rowling, um, which was the two R's in the Hope R.R. Torture meme that I was kind of playing with. Um, as far as pen names go, if you remember that back then. But anyways... Yeah, so, you know, and I've been reading a ton of Brandon Sanderson. I've done the Stormlight Archives twice now. I've done uh, Mistborn Era 1 and 2. I've done The Reckoners. I've done the Skyward series. I just read Elantris, and right now I'm working on Warbreaker and some of his little side stories. So I've been reading a ton of Brandon Sanderson and just looking to him as kind of a model author. And this is even better because like he has classes that he posts to his YouTube channel from the, um, from uh, what is it? UFC? UFC? No, that's the fighting. No, USC. At any rate, he teaches a professional writing class at that Mormon college in Utah. Um, and, uh, it's very good. Uh, he's very good at teaching. He's very good at writing. And I've since sort of refocused from like wanting to be a Patrick Rothfuss to looking at Brandon Sanderson and being like, that's better. Like, you know, sentence to sentence, Patrick Rothfuss might write a little bit prettier, but Brandon Sanderson publishes lots of books and they're all really good. And frankly, like who really cares that much how pretty the pros are? Um, and that, you know, that's one of the many lessons that I've tried to internalize lately. It's like, stop worrying so much about the prose. Like you're not writing poetry here. You're writing a story. Just write it. Stop worrying about how pretty each sentence sounds. You know, there is a point where you can try too hard and it, it becomes obnoxious, um, to, to most readers, I think. And, uh, yeah, so that's just one of the things that I'm trying to work on. But anyways, you know, restructuring the whole format of my brain. I ended up taking the whole month of December off um, to try and do this, just give myself a break. And uh, 
just give myself a writing sabbatical and figure out, okay, where, where do I actually want to go with this? What do, what, what do I actually want to accomplish? And, and how am I failing to do that with the William Winchbane series? And I decided it's time to start a new novel. Um, and it's set in the same world. It has the same world building as the William Winchbane series, but the world building is now being worked on while I'm uh, outlining the actual book rather than writing the entire book and then doing the majority of the world building around the existing narrative. I'm now creating both simultaneously and I'm able to pull a lot of the work that I did with the William Witchbane series out and be like, I like this, let's keep it. I don't like this. This was just to try and explain something within the William Witchbane series. Let's get rid of it. So I've simplified, condensed the lore um, in a way that I find much more enjoyable and uh, changed the things that were like really problematic. Like just to give one big example that sticks out, like, you know, there's, there's Earth and the spirit realm, right? And William Witchbane series starts on Earth with William Witchbane, a human, laying on his porch, right? And it's like, when I wrote that scene, I was two weeks into my writing journey. Um, and I didn't know what Earth was supposed to look like based on the lore because I hadn't written the lore yet. I hadn't done the world building. So Earth just looked like Earth. Everything was just kind of normal, sort of think Harry Potter. You know, it's like basically normal human society. And then every time I would add something to that, I would have to keep revising it um, to try and make what Will was seeing and experiencing, you know, his take on society around him that needed to reflect the new stuff. And it, it, it was very complicated. And eventually, you know, the more I looked at it, I'm like, Earth wouldn't be normal. It wouldn't look like this. Like, it would, this is like a wacky alternative timeline universe. Like, why is everything relatively normal? It shouldn't be. Anyway, so that, that's just kind of like a, a major example. And it's like, now I've taken a step back. I've thought about what do I actually want the world to look like? You know, this world, that world, whatever world. What themes do I want to include? Which themes do I want to exclude? Um, you know, and I've built the world now based on what I actually want. And that feels really good. And then I'm building the outline of the new narrative for the new novel alongside that, rather than trying to do things retroactively with revision. And the whole system is just going so much better. It's so much easier. When I come up with a new idea, or I want to make a change, or I see a problem and need to fix something, it takes, you know, five minutes where it used to take an hour, right? Like, it's just infinitely more efficient. And I know some of you out there are... Uh, uh, aspiring writers such as myself. And uh, I, I will say the outlining methodology, which is the idea for which I got from studying Brandon Sanderson, uh, give it a try if you haven't. Um, writing an outline beforehand, I think, is the way to go for me. Granted, I haven't completed the process yet, but already, you know, I've been, uh, I've been working on this book since January 1st, so it's for a little over four months, four months in a week. And I can say the outlining methodology, I think, is much better than the discovery, figure it out on the page while you're actually writing the manuscript methodology. Um, but that's just me. So I would highly recommend that anybody who hasn't given it a try does give it a try. Yeah, so everything just kind of feels like it's falling into place a little bit better. Um, I've gotten a lot of stuff in my life sorted out. I've got a lot of difficult lessons, walls that I needed to get over with my writing done. And at this point, I am working on a new novel and I'm very excited. And I, I do think, and I'm not going to promise this, but I still think that like the William Winchbane series is going to have its day where it gets published, but it's not going to be published as my first novel. And it's going to be um, outlined from the ground up in the future if I do decide to write that. So, you know, the whole William Wishbane series is not dead. It's just on the back burner for right now. And as much as I would love to tell you guys about the new novel that I'm writing, um, I don't want to commit to anything in these videos where I, I start to feel like I'm locking myself in here or there. I'm just going to say that it is really cool. Um, it is high fantasy with... Uh, 
a side helping of science fiction. Um, and my cat is just zooming around right now. She must be excited about it too. Um, and uh, I think it's it's really, really cool. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I'd say as far as the rough outline, I feel like I'm maybe about a third, maybe, maybe 33 to 50% done with the rough outline. I feel like the first half of the book is pretty well roughed in. And, uh, you know, I've, I've gone over it several times now and it's it's really starting to feel solid, like, I get what the characters' motivations are, how they're aligning with one another. I get how the plot weaves into all this. It's all starting to feel in line. Now the characters just need to kind of make that second half of the hero's journey and kind of, uh, well, I don't want to get too much into it, but the point is things are going good. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Don't expect to publish book anytime soon, but I am still working on it diligently, still loving writing. It is still something that I'm extremely passionate about. Nothing in that regard has changed at all. It's just, it's a really hard thing to try and write a proper novel and get it published. It's, a, it's such a big process. But anyways, uh, I think that's enough of an update for you guys. Um, if you have any questions for me, slap them in the comments down below and I will try and answer those up for you. The uh, the stream is still going on, so if you want to hang out with me and catch up, you know, I am back uh, Saturdays, 5 to 7 p.m. is when we're trying to stream. Right now we are playing Elden Ring. Recently we finished Blood Level 4 Bloodborne, and I say that because I'm very proud of the fact that I completed Bloodborne at Blood Level 4. Um, and we'll be doing, probably just focusing on Soulsborne content moving forward. Uh, I know we really want to do a playthrough of Sekiro, we want to do Demon Souls because I'm on the PS5 now. And we want to do some more Elden Ring and we want to do some more challenge runs. So just know that that's a thing that's going on. Again, that's Saturdays 5 to 7. So feel free to come by and hang out. I would love to catch up with you guys. And I think that's enough for right now. Um, until the next update, probably five months from now. And I, maybe I'll have a finished rough outline at that point. We'll see. All right. Beard, stubbly heart. Love you guys.